Heavenly Father, as we come before thee this morning, we come in all humbleness, knowing that we are solely dependent upon thee for our life as well as leadership. Father, we would ask that thy Holy Spirit might dwell among us, that we might each be conscious of the dictates of thy powers today. Father, help us as we attempt to lead our people. Help us, Father, to know our responsibilities as labor leaders. Help us to always seek the leadership of thy spirit and never to do anything contrary to the dictates of our heart. Father, forgive us wherein we fail thee so often, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> As I said, we have considerable business, a rather lengthy agenda to try to dispose of today. And we'll try to move along as fast as possible. Before we do get into the business of the meeting, uh, we'd like to announce that we've made arrangements for lunch to save the board uh, and another adjoining room. We have a guest speaker. We've invited a young lady to address the board during the lunch hour. Uh, Mrs. Crystal from here in Jackson, who is the legislative chairman for the Mississippians for Public Education. We have a this group is pushing the reenactment of the compulsory attendance law, as you probably know, and we thought it would be good to have invite her to the meeting, and she has uh, agreed to do so. So we will have lunch all together in the wall that room, just down the hall. And of course, we expect that you will not go off your expense account when you turn in your bill. <laughs> we. Uh, <coughs> have a number of items to take up today in connection with our next convention. We'd like to get those things out of the way, way first, if possible. To start with, the Executive Council of the FLCIO has recently adopted some changes in the rules governing state and local central bodies, which means that it's necessary for us to make some changes in our Constitution to bring it in line with those rules and regulations. Uh, Tom made a special effort to get enough copies of those rules for each member of the board, but they didn't come in. So we don't have one copy here this morning. It'll be impossible for every member of the board to review them. And what I would suggest if we do, that when they do come in, that we send each board member a copy of the rules <coughs> in order that you can go over them. And if we hear this morning, uh, consider the advisability of Brother Knight and myself being responsible for drafting proposed changes in the Constitution to come in line and then send them out to you as soon as this is done. There's only one or two places in our Constitution, in my opinion, that will have to be changed to get in line. Uh, the main one is the fact that the rules calls for the elimination of secret ballots in the election of officers. I've talked with Stanton Smith about this and explained to them how we elected officers, that we nominated one day, prepared ballots, and then when the election was conducted, it was done by a balloting. Uh, by a secret ballot. And he felt that the only, that there wouldn't be much required here, that the delegate could probably sign his name to the ballot, and that would be sufficient. Now, there is another required change, but I've checked the Constitution, and frankly, I think that all we need to do here is to uh, probably reinterpret our language in the Constitution concerning delegates to the convention from some of our central bodies and the state associations that those delegates will have to be members of a local union in good standing to be seated. Now, uh, we might need to clarify that language just a little bit, but I, I really don't think so. 
And if it's all right with the board, <clears throat> I will assume the responsibility, either Brother Knight or myself, will write all of our central bodies and state associations, those groups that are affiliated with the council, advising them that all delegates to the next convention sent by that organization must be a uh, delegate from an affiliated local union in order to be seated. Would that meet your approval to handle that this way? This way, uh, we eliminate the possibility of one of these groups sending somebody to the convention and then not being seated. We think they should know about this in advance. Is that all right? May I ask a question? You mean that, uh, uh, like Jackson Central Labor Union, if they send a delegate, they, uh, he, he must be sent by a local division? No, no, no. He that must delegate, be. that delegate must be a member of a local union oh. affiliated with the state council. But the central body can still say. Right, right, right. See, what we've had happen in the past a time or two, that one or two of our central bodies have sent delegates to the convention whose, whose local was not affiliated with state organization, but they were affiliated with the central body. And that's in violation of the rules. That happened in law. This happened in law, and then we, it happened here one time. So they've, I mean, frankly, this should have, this is that it should have been, but the, the rules specify now, we have to get in compliance with the rules. All right, is it, if it's agreeable, then Brother Knight and myself will be responsible for trying to get the constitutional changes in line with the rules. And then whatever is necessary, we'll send it out to you for your approval before any resolution sent out uh, after the convention call is sent out. <coughs> Now we have, uh, as I said, a number of things that uh, we want to try to dispose of in connection with the convention. There has been some discussion with some of our board members about the possibility of changing our regular convention year to an odd year in order to avoid some of the situations we have, the legislature in session and things of this kind, congressional elections. Now, if, if you think this is worth considering, I'd make this suggestion to you. It would mean the necessity of holding a regular convention next year and then start at that point from a two-year basis. Ask this question then, Carl, in relation to that. Isn't there a possibility of the legislature meeting yearly? Now, isn't there That's a good possibility. Frankly, I don't think that we have gained a whole lot by it, but I thought it might be a good idea to throw it out here for discussion this morning. You might want to think about this, let the situation develop some more, and maybe at our next board meeting, if it looks like the thing wants it, then bring it up at that time. That would be agreeable? Let's do it that way. You'll be thinking about the thing. And the only thing about changing it, it would probably make it uh, a little easier on Tom and myself in particular, uh, especially when we get into these congressional campaigns where we've got the legislature going on and maybe two or three congressional campaigns. That would really be the only advantage that I can see. But we really don't have, I don't think, enough information in hand right now to make this proposal that we maybe should wait till our next board meeting. So if, it, if it's all right with you, we'll do it that way. Now we've got a small problem here that Brother Knight and myself have actually been authorized to deal with, and that's the place for the convention. Uh, the board's already set the date, that's set. We set it here for this hotel because of Heidelberg uh, at the time we talked with them, didn't have space available. Now they advise us that they do have the space. Somebody has counseled out or something, and we can hold a convention at the Heidelberg if you desire. Well, have you already made arrangements for this hotel here? Today? We have uh, made reservations here. We had a strange position. We got reservations at both hotels right now. And we have sent out communication to the effect that it would be at this hotel. I think. I think That's under those circumstances, it should remain that way. Actually, Bert, uh, the status of the 
thing uh, in both hotels is, is still on attended. Well, they, they, they are. They are. We have not committed ourselves to either hotel. Well, that's Even what I had. Paul said, at the time this communication went out, the Heidelberg Hotel facilities were all taken up. See, then when I went back to cancel a tentative date that we had made that earlier, is when I found out that uh, someone Man. had canceled that that they had on the book prior had been planned off. See, so that's the situation actually. We're not committed to either one. I understand that uh, <clears throat> it's easier on you people to have it at the Heidelberg, and personally, I prefer this hotel. But uh, that's the advantage, frankly. The the, the only re advantage, frankly, is being convenient to the office in case we got stuff to mimograph and run off. This is a real advantage. Claude, I believe the Heidelberg is more desirous among the bigger majority of the delegations that attend the convention, and this is really the people, I guess, in the final analysis want to try to please. Personally, I prefer it. I think most of the delegations does. I know the one spoke to me about it, too. They do like the Heidelberg. They like the Heidelberg better. It's more centrally located, and it's yeah. near the Marsons Cafeteria and several other things you don't have right in this particular location. Special Mr. Trailer. Chairman, <laughs> I move that the convention be held at the Heidelberg Hotel. We have a motion that the convention be held at the Heidelberg. We have a second on that motion. Any further discussion? Not all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Mr. Knight, you now know where the convention will be. <laughs> I'll so notify all. <laughs> I'm mixed up myself. Pick, pick up your cut from George now. Yeah. <laughs> Back last year, we had a meeting of the, of the central body presidents largely and the watt directors and at that particular meeting one or two of the delegates present raised the question about the need of changing up the makeup of the executive board or the executive committee whereby each central body district would have representation on the board and there was quite a discussion there about this thing and i advised those delegates what they wanted to do here was that the board should submit recommendations on this, and I advised uh, those people present that constitutional changes didn't have to just be submitted by the board, that any affiliated organization could submit proposals of this kind, but I told them that I would take it up at our next board meeting. <clears throat> there was some talk in that meeting about the need of enlarging the executive committee, and certainly there's some justification towards this, but you have to consider the additional expense also when you do this. And there was some talk about the possibility of enlarging the executive committee whereby each congressional district would have uh, an executive committee member, which would probably eliminate what the uh, complaints were about. But when you approach it like this, it appears to me that you are putting yourself in the same position that uh, we're in as far as the one man, one vote proposition is concerned that the people that actually pay the bills will not be given the representation. This is the fallacy to this particular approach to it. And with that brief explanation, I'd like to throw this open and see if the board wants to make any recommendations towards changing up the makeup of the board or the executive committee. Was this, uh, in your discussion, uh, a proposal that each central body have someone on the executive board to well, this was the line of thought. Uh, who else was at that meeting? Right, that would be a hundred self. People? Oh, you were yeah. there. Maybe Brother Nikes can explain it to you a little bit. Uh, he's president of the Harrison County Central Body and was at the meeting. Well, uh, I just remember from what area that this was. Came out of Meridian more than Meridian. Yeah. Uh, was brought up. And in one sense of the word, it's going to enlarge your board, which is going to be more expensive. And in another sense of the word, it will cause some to get more representation. And 
and I haven't made no decision on it myself. My mind's still open on it. I have no suggestion. Does this mean that it would increase the size of the board by 14 members? That'd be kind of hard to figure, of course, if you if you went about trying to give each central body a board member, as the board is constituted now, it would mean that some members of the board would, uh, would as a matter of necessity, have to be knocked off, see, because uh, we have several board members out of two or three central body areas, which means the board would be completely revised. Again, uh, in order to consider this thing in its proper perspective, I think you have to consider where the, the per capita is coming from, per capita income, because you are going to again be placing yourself in a position that, that board members are not necessarily going to be representing people, the taxpayer, so to speak. This is one of the objections to this approach. I think that if the uh, people present uh, would think a little bit when they go to elect the board members that it would be possible to work something out without it being in the Constitution to try to give representation to the areas without enlarging the board to any great extent. Really, we've got only two areas, I think, right now, maybe three, no, there's four, maybe more, that don't have representation. And as I pointed out to two or three of these people, if they would get the locals all affiliated out of the ears, they wouldn't have any problem getting board members on, getting them elected, you see. Well, that was the uh, point that I was thinking of, Claude, in that respect. In uh, uh, light of our finances, if the people in those areas don't have enough interest in it to affiliate with the council, certainly I don't see where they're justified in demanding representation. That's just pretty well my thinking on it, but I still said I was going to bring it up here and let the board kick it around and see if they wanted to make a stab at it. I want to say something on it, Claude. All right. uh, I've given this question considerable thought by a number of people over the state. My travels have discussed it with me in my own organization and several others that I've been in contact with. The main objection, uh, I think uh, it's not so much directed at the board members as it is at the executive council of the board itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, what I hear is that they feel that uh, there ought to be at least uh, five vice presidents, not three, at least five. five. <coughs> and uh, of course there's all kind of opinions as to how this yeah. five ought to be selected and where they ought to come from. But it basically boils down to uh, this in my opinion. I think it would satisfy most of the people that I've talked to if it was worked out on the basis of five with the understanding that they wasn't specified from any particular place except you insert a rule which said that you could only have one vice president from one particular center body area. Then you would still have some in the state, of course, it wouldn't have any, but you wouldn't have one that had more than one. I think this is really the serious objection that I'm hearing. Well, this is not pretty well a long line for discussion. I might say that one of the gentlemen in that meeting was Stevens from right. Corinth that, that raised, uh, that had quite a bit to say about this. Right. And I would certainly suggest that if anything's done, that, that this would be the approach to it, to enlarge the, to, uh, <coughs> the executive committee from five to seven, which would mean putting on two additional vice presidents. Right. But and wouldn't necessarily increase right. the overall size right. of your board. It wouldn't wouldn't need to add another fourteen. I, uh, I there is logic to this argument. You'd have a larger committee, and you'd get a better, I think, a representative view by having a couple of more vice presidents. Because you have we have meetings and and so with the vice presidents more than. Well, some of the people tell me this, and maybe it wouldn't happen. You know, they'll give you just about every excuse for not being affiliated. Mm -hmm. But some of them says that if there was five vice presidents scattered more over the state in more districts than what they are now, that that would be a stronger personal link to the council with that particular area, and that that person would influence affiliations more than at the present time. Now, whether this would be a reality or whether it's just another excuse, who knows? But this is one of the arguments they're used. <laughs> Might not increase it any, but at least some of them saying in their opinion it would. 
Well, you, what you're saying then, James, if I understand you correctly, that if any proposal is made, that it should be based on the fact that we enlarge the executive committee to seven, that would be two additional vice presidents, right. and that no central body here could have two vice presidents. Right. And not hit it on approach it from and not try to go to a basis. congressional or a central body uh, district each one having one but just yeah. i think this would satisfy the uh, questions that everybody's raised or in my opinion anyway. well this wouldn't be too expensive to do this add two people to the trade committee i think that it might bring in enough numbers to justify the expense even so this would be the logical and that would only apply to the executive committee, not right. the executive board. The, the, the people I've talked to don't particularly, uh, if the executive council part of it was handled in such a way as a broader distribution, then I think the board member thing becomes secondary and they just, just about forget it on that basis that they could be elected uh, like they always have been. Mm -hmm. Of course, personally, I still would like to see uh, that group distributed as widely as possible. And I've always helped this position. I think it's uh, better be to have people distributed where you've got members. Of course, you don't go to a place and elect them where you don't have. But I'm thinking of the whole western and northeastern uh, section, uh, northeast and north, uh, the whole eastern uh, line of Mississippi. I guess Martin. Raymond's about the only one that whole section Raymond other than Marvin. Martin. And, Martin. and you've got a whole section of people from. Uh, starting from Meridian and below all the way from there to Tennessee, and there is a lot of members there that are affiliated and they don't have uh, near as much representation in proportion as other sections of the state. As far as CWA is concerned, we've tried to find somebody from in that area to represent us, and we can't do it for a number of years. Some of the others might look around and try to find one. We and CWA haven't had one. One of the problems. But they are that's representing representation there based on members and anywhere else in my opinion. Well, would you like to offer a motion? Would somebody like to offer a motion that we that we draw up a constitutional change calling for five vice presidents? This would have to Yeah, be. I'll make that motion. I think it should come from the board. I think the people uh, right. will appreciate it more yeah. than if they have to send in a resolution and then figure they got to fight with us about it. I, personally, I ain't already come from this group. I'll second the motion. Second the motion. We have any discussion on the motion? Yeah, just a question. Uh, is this going to reduce the number of board members by two? No, I don't no, think you'd so. Just you'd have to add, 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 add two, wouldn't it? You'd keep your present size forward, but you'd add two That'd to make the board a 17 member board right. instead of 15. Right. Yeah. Well, sir, we have any further discussion? Well, now that, that's his motion also includes. Not to the board. Just add two vice presidents. He didn't uh, state it, but I suppose he meant that to include uh, the provision that no central... I stated my written discussion, and I will restate it, Brother Byers. I, yes, the motion I made was to rewrite the Constitution in such a manner that the council would have five vice presidents in the place of three, and that no two vice presidents would be from the same central body area. Well, that is my motion. That is the motion. We have any further discussion? Not all in favor of the motion signify for saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. So ordered. Would you like for Brother Knight and myself to be responsible for drafting this proposed change also? Yeah. Yeah. Brother, uh, uh, would you like action? Would you like for Brother Knight and myself to be responsible for this change yes. also? Yes. All right. Well, the motion was carried. <laughs> now, I'm going to get down to, to another proposition. I asked for two extra vice presidents. Wait a minute, Claude. Yeah. They're still discussing. That increased the overall size by two, but not the board itself. Not the board itself. Not the board itself. Right. Well, to make the board go from 15 to 17, it will increase the size of the board. But not yeah. as board members as such. Yeah, yeah the board members. members. The total group would go up, yeah. Right. Because you elect the vice president separate from the regular board. Right. 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 Your vice presidents are also members of the board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You said one thing, and I thought no, you said this different. So I make the basis it's from 15 to 17. Now I'm going to do, I want to bring another matter to your attention, which, which will necessitate another member on the board if you do what I deem necessary to do at this particular time. The situation being what it is in the state of Mississippi with the uh, 
increased Negro restoration has become necessary, in my opinion, for us to have a Negro on this board, or at least a Negro trade unionist designated as a representative of this organization to send out to work in the field with this particular group. And I think that we're probably the only state council that doesn't have at least one Negro on their board. And I'd like to open this up for discussion. There's one or two ways that it can be done. And I might advise you, <clears throat> before we do start the discussion, that we have already secured the services of a member of the ILA local in Gulfport, Mr. Herbert Williams, He's agreed to do some work for us in this particular area. And the executive committee has uh, went along with this suggestion. And um, <clears throat> he is presently working in this area of assisting these people in motor restoration, working on the affiliation problem of the local unions that are predominantly Negro in membership and stuff of this kind. And my people in Washington, I've had some discussion with them about this thing, and they think that at this point that we need to make an effort to place a Negro on the board. There's one or two ways that it could be done. One, you could approach it to draft a resolution that the executive board itself be authorized to select a member of the minority race uh, to be in charge of minority affairs and that he would have the status of a full board member. This would remove the, the need actually of putting him on a ballot and electing him this guy and run the risk of him not being elected. So what's your views on this? I'll give you a good one this time. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're fixing to explode a bomb when you bring that up in the convention. That's my opinion. I, I think I go along with your thinking on it. I think we do need somebody, but I think right now, with conditions as they are, <clears throat> we ought to try to get around creating any disturbance in our convention with it, and we, we're sure going to create one <clears throat> if you bring in a resolution to that effect. Let me just say this. Uh, I think Brother Bower is right from a resolution angle. I don't think, in my opinion, Paul, that this would, should be acceptable to the colored people because what they would be doing was be letting us decide. Uh, and I think the press would pick it up. I think we'd get some bad publicity with saying we were deciding which one of the colored people we were picking out an Uncle Tom to help run the union affairs. You know, I, this is yeah. what I can foresee. Yeah. Now, what I also foresee is that I'm one of the organizations, or my organization is, not me personally, that's got a lot of colored members now. We've got plants already that's got as many as 100 colored people in them, and I have no assurance whatsoever for what we won't have some colored delegates okay. in the, at this convention. Uh, we've already had some people elected uh, to some post uh, within the union. We had a colored girl that sat on the uh, election committee and elected all the white officers in the Harrisburg local just a couple of months ago. So we are one organization that may have some colored delegates at this convention. My organization personally will support the election of a colored delegate to the board of this council. Well, you uh, regardless of the feeling, I think it's time we have to. If one's nominated, then he's a reasonable person that uh, would qual so far qualify as a board member. I think you can count on my organization to support that person to election. Well, maybe it wouldn't be necessary to bring it up in the form of a resolution if the situation looks like it's uh, uh, satisfying, you know, suitable. We're gonna, if we're going to lodge the executive committee to seven people, this is going to throw open a couple of positions. It might be that we could get together in caucuses and agree on supporting a Negro to the board without even making saying a word about it. And I'll let one this route. I this think would this really be, be the best way to do it. I, I think you'd get away from the Uncle Tom that. business and all of the hands. Hmm? You'd get away from the Uncle Tom uh, business by right. it that way. Well, I'll add to that a little bit. Of course, we're a very small organization. 
given in the uh, state, as far as that's concerned, uh, nicely the one. But it's gotten to the point now, we have colored members also. Right, sure. And, uh, of course, we have, uh, in that area there, we have the same type of feelings that exist all over the state there. We have some fanatics on within our union there, but then, so far as supporting an idea of that type is concerned, I think I can give you assurance myself that our organization will support such an idea. Uh, well, our local is a small local. We've had a Negro on the, as a teller on the election of the local officers. At the present time, we have a nigger steward, and the only uh, two niggers, three niggers in that department, in which there are about 13, and the rest of them are white. And amazing to know that the white ones are the one that nominated them and elected him. The other two niggers wasn't to the meeting. <laughs> well, making more progress than I knew about it. I guess we all have niggers in our organizations yeah. now. I, yeah, I saw have, a couple of bus drivers here. Well, here. we've got several. We've had several niggers for years, but let me say this. If it's left up to my local division, they would not support putting a nigger on the board. I, I, I know that for, for a fact. Of course, uh, I, personally would, I personally would support it. And uh, when I come to a convention, I don't uh, particularly come to represent just my division, I, I come to do what I think is best for organized labor <laughs> as a whole. And I certainly would support it because I think it's necessary. And I'd take whatever criticism they wanted to level at me for so doing. Well, here's, a, here's how simple this thing is. Now, we uh, might well face up to it. If we're going to be successful politically in this state, we have to have an alliance between the Negroes and organized labor. And as I pointed out, in these era of meetings we had, we've come to grips with this thing, and this era of meeting laid it out for what it really is. Uh, we've got 21 counties in this state, really, that's got a majority of people, Negro in population. And if we don't concern ourselves with this matter and get these people lined up with us, the business community is going to use them, they're going to elect the candidates anti-labor, and it's a matter of survival, if nothing else, it's necessary for us to do that. Well, frankly, I'd rather handle it just like we're talking about here myself and uh, not do a, a resolution, just have an understanding. We'll make this effort and we'll try to get the, the groups, the larger groups, lined up in caucuses and explain to them what we want to try to do and see if we can't agree to a candidate. We'll have to consult with the Negroes themselves. We can't do it to, you know, find out who they'd like to have on the board and then try to elect him. I'd rather do it this way. Is that agreeable with the board? I think that's the only fact. Well, I guess I that's the only way to handle Okay. It. And at our next board meeting, prior to the convention, then we can decide how we want to approach it, really. I think oh. the, the first approach to this thing, the various groups, is the fact that there's a large number of Negro membership in this state, and up to now, these people haven't been represented that's it. in this organization. Right. Go for By it. their own race. Right. 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 Uh, I'd like to make this statement. It's a little off the subject, but it still concerns the Negro and uh, the right to work law and the policies that some companies are using. Now, when the civil right was passed, the company I worked for, they got up an IQ test that had taken a person with at least two years college to pass it. And what they got ourselves into, their selves into, they, they, up until then we had two Negroes in the plant. They were janitors for years, since it's been there. Well, what's happened, we have one nigger with a degree from Norman College. We have one with three years from Southern, uh, Southern University. And we have one with two years. And all the rest of them are high school. And what's amazing, now they got to hire four people and the one that's got the application in, the white and, and the Negroes, the only four in the group qualified out of 17. And they're gonna have to hire them. Well, they, 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 so, they. therefore, if you get one on the board, you ought to get a pretty smart fellow. Yeah. Oh, we've yeah, got, we've got, got I can think of a number of them. Sometimes, dude, we got some members sitting on a sewing machine that's got college education right now. Well, I can think of a uh, number of Negroes because, in yeah. the states qualified to sit on this board. I, I know a number of them personally myself. This won't be any problem. We got so, one in 
in that small uncle of mine that's qualified to sit on here. Well, you don't be no problem finding a qualified person. If you take that approach, uh, there's several that might uproot some of us. That's it? right. Very <laughs> <That's laughs> <right. laughs> possible. I think right. this, one, this one with the college degree, I asked him why. <laughs> Uh, this one. <laughs> well, we can spend considerable time on this subject, I'm sure. But if it's agreeable with the board, we'll just agree informally to do it this way, not even let it show up in the minutes. And that, uh, that I think it'd probably be better not to even let it show up in the minutes. And then at our next meeting, if we'll try to, the meeting before the convention, we'll, we'll try to lay the groundwork and strategy for bringing this about. Yeah. All right. Meantime, I got one other suggestion to you and Tom, and of course this should apply to all the rest of us. Mm -hmm. In our travels from now to the convention, ever all colored locals you come in contact with, they're yes. the people that needs now to affiliate with this organization. We've been talking this for some time. And it's, uh, we need to have control of them rather than some of these radical groups that will carry them down the road to destruction. And if they'll come on in, they right. have a chance to get problems. Right. To well, we pointed this out to Mr. Williams when we when we made this arrangement with him that 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 this that we would make this effort if we could get him affiliated now we've got something we go back and tell him that the board has informed that took this position okay another question dealing with the civil rights issue the executive council has directed the state organizations to appoint civil rights committees and I have, in the absence of a board meeting, appointed or submitted the names of the executive committee to act as a civil rights committee for the state council. And I'd like to submit that matter to you for approval or disapproval at this time. I felt that the executive committee would be the appropriate group to act as a civil rights committee for the organization. I move that we support the action taken. Second. the Executive Committee Act as a Civil Rights right. Committee for the organization. We're having a discussion on that motion. We did get a second that was went. Right. Since we're getting drafted a little bit, well, yeah. what are we who what are we supposed to do? Really not <laughs> that, that, really not a whole lot to it. It'd just be on occasions anything that relate, relates to the race question that the committee would have to consider it. I think more than anything else that they like to point out that the FLCO does have civil rights committees. Uh, Bill Snitzel is chairman of the Civil Rights Committee for the FLCO, and he and personally all. called me before the last convention to see what we had done. Yeah. He wanted to make a report to the convention, you see. And all other things being equal, they'll be hung first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. They won't just hang okay, Claude yeah, Ramsey, they won't just hang Claude Ramsey tomorrow night, they'll hang all the vice presidents too. <laughs> now, I'm in the vice president, so we're going to amend the Constitution. Well, we're going to wait till we get these other. We're <laughs> through. <laughs> yeah. Two more victims. <laughs> more trees. More I'm going to give you another, another, another good dose while we're on the same subject. For the last year or so, maybe two years, <coughs> the State Advisory Committee to the Civil Rights Commission has been after me to serve on that body. And I have very patiently pointed out to them that I felt that it would uh, do more harm than good, that I could do a better job of trying to bring about good race relations by not serving on the commission. And I still feel that way about it. I pointed this out to them just recently. But I did tell them that I'd bring this up at our next board meeting and get the consensus of our board, depending on the board. I don't see where I could serve any real useful purpose by being on this commission. It could create uh, a lot of consternation uh, consternation in the mind of some of our people that's really bothered with this issue and really not serve and really not accomplish anything because it's more or less uh, an honorary body that investigates and makes reports to the commission and frankly uh, I think we can do that without being on the commission I think itself. You're absolutely right. Does anybody disagree with this? Well we won't spend a lot of time on it. This is my opinion on it. I don't think that we've got to the point yet that that we could afford to do this. 
that somebody here that feels otherwise would like to hear from him, if you think I should serve. Okay, we'll pay it on. <clears throat> We're making pretty good uh, progress here. I want to make sure I get all of the questions relating to the Negro question out of the way while we're on that particular subject. On the convention speakers for our next convention, what do you think about the advisability of having Phil Wakeman address our convention? He's, the, he's a Negro, a native Mississippian, originally from Vicksburg, who is the, what is his official title? Uh, He's not assistant coke director, uh, but he's deputy coke director, I believe. So. No, he, oh. I think he's classified as an assistant coke. No, Rorick is the deputy. Mm -hmm. Phil is an assistant. They assistant. Got so foul. He, in other words, Phil is in charge of minority affairs for coke, is what it really gets down to. And he's been working with us uh, very closely for a number of years. Have we made enough progress to have a Negro on our program yet, or not? He makes a good speech, and he can That's put this thing in a proper perspective. <laughs> you doubt it? Uh, I, I say it's problematical. I, I don't know whether we've made enough progress to do that or not. We can try. See what uh, the this action This is one that I know that you're going to want to think about some, because I've hit you cold with it. <clears throat> is he in a position to be a delegate to the convention? Oh, no, no, he's on the national staff. Oh, see. I see. Yeah, he's on the national staff. And, of course, we will have, uh, we hope to have Al Barking down uh, to the convention. But if member, you know, to address it, I hope we can get him in here. We'll try to. And, uh, and his <coughs> absence. Last time he, he wasn't able to come and he, he uh, sent uh, Joe Ruark, remember? And we, of course, I uh, know we'll get somebody off the staff, whether it's Al or not. And it's occurred to me that that it might be worth considering the possibility of inviting Phil Waitman to address the convention. How much, how much do you think, Claude, this would, uh, this would help among the Negro population to have? Well, this is one thing that I had in mind that it might, it might do some good in this area with the Negroes themselves. There <coughs> should be more Negroes attend uh, this convention than right. have attended in the past. Right. How about this, uh, Claude, if uh, Phil could be here anyway, yeah. and not have him listed on, on the program. program. And yeah. then if we could work him in after our election, see how our election comes out yeah. in uh, getting yeah. the board member. If yeah. it works good and everything's yeah. good, that's right. Right. Good. That, good. That, that was the reason right. I yeah, was like the asking the reason for guard. If, uh, <clears throat> although I was wondering if if you could invite him down just just to hang around, in other words, uh, yeah. to see how things kind of kind of go because uh, yeah, they are fall. <laughs> Well, I think this, uh, whether he does or whether he don't, he would be a good man to have at convention. Uh, yeah, for caucuses and otherwise. Of course, you might run into this problem. I don't know how the man would feel in his department to say, uh, send this fellow down here, and if things works out, we'll let him speak. If it don't, he won't. They might say, well, maybe he better not come if there's any doubt. You know? No, I can handle it. I don't believe it's really the problem there. Well, I'll see. I can work this out. They, they'll, they're awfully cooperative, and they recognize the problems we got. That's one thing that I can truthfully say about those people in Washington. They're, very considerate of our problems. And I think what we're trying to do. Wakeman himself uh, thoroughly mm -hmm. understands. Very yeah, much so. Phil does understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As Claude said he was born to OEN Right. I've known him for uh, close to 25 years, and he's very sensible. Yeah. Well, I'll make this statement from our area down there. With the affiliated organizations we have up here, that they it would be all right. But then we do have some of the all biggest organizations yeah, down there, there that are not affiliated. Yeah, we have taken offense to. Offense to it. I don't, I don't know. They would, right? Yeah. It might be that it's too soon to think about it. It might be. I think 
course, and I swear them not. If you ever get these organizations affiliated down there, it might take years to do it and change in uh, officials in the organization themselves, which they haven't seen fit to do. They've had elections this year, and elected the same ones back. The same type of thinking. And I don't even know giving the rest of the people justice by even giving them consideration in the first place. Well, we don't have to make an immediate decision on this uh, thing. Uh, if you'd like, we can watch the scene for a while before we make a final decision on it. And we might invite Phil down, and if he looks like the occasion wants it, and we don't have to have him listed on the program, we can arrange to have him address the convention without a great deal of difficulty, I think. What I'd like to do is go back and put out a few feelers uh, well, I'm about the people that I'm uh, that. acquainted up with it would give me an honest reaction to it to see what they feel. Now, my own personal feeling is I'd have to not go by in this issue. As far as I'm concerned, he could be on the program, and he should be, and he can speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of our unions, uh, at their international convention, conventions or somewhere along the line, has had, I guess, every group at one time or another an address by a member of the Negro community. I know at our national convention, sometimes we have uh, two or three colored people during the course of a week out of 20 speakers. Yeah. So I think all of the delegates that's attended a COPE meeting out of this area or international convention, they've heard colored speakers before, and if it was this type of people at your meeting, I think the reaction would be all right. This is my opinion, because we've never got any reaction from what happened in uh, mm -hmm. the places they have been, and this happened. But I would want to put out some feelers just to feel the reaction. Well, why don't we why don't we do it this way that that each member of the board do the same thing, and that you advise us say no later than April the first, or we could even wait longer than that May the first, since it's going to be in July or say May the first, that you advise us no longer than May the first as to what you're thinking is if the situation's improved. I'm I'm in agreement with Robbie what he says about some of the groups in the shipyard that. Yeah. That, uh, that it would probably be offensive to this particular element. It might keep us from affiliating these people until things change considerably. This was this is a deterrent effect that we'd have. I'm sure of that. I think it'd be good to point out that Phil is a native Mississippi. Right, a native Mississippi. Well, then he holds a responsible position right. in the national organization. Right. Member right. of the packing house workers, you know. Right. Okay, let's do it that way. Well, yes. yes. Let me throw a fastball at you. All right. What about this board giving consideration to a concerted effort to try to get Vice President Humphrey here to address the Well, I've got that on my agenda to bring up. Uh, and uh, it's just as good a time to bring it up now as any. Uh, while we own convention speakers, I wanted to get some suggestions from you. If you had anybody in mind that you wanted to invite as speakers, we want to know about it now so we can start getting the invitations out. Now, <clears throat> I am at the present time working on the governor. I was supposed to have an appointment with him. Uh, yesterday was a week ago, and because of my father-in-law's uh, condition and subsequent death, I wasn't able to fill it, I had to call it off, and I'm going to try to see Monday. I feel like there's a good possibility of getting the governor to address this convention, but I wanted to talk with him about this and a couple of other matters before I do. Now, I have talked to the vice president about the possibility of addressing our next convention myself, and uh, he advised me to write him a letter and he could see what could be done. But in considering this, we have to consider uh, what would happen at the state level with the state political situation also. I don't think that we can afford to invite the Vice President of the United States to address the convention while, without having some kind of uh, an assurance from the governor that he will be assured of all of the uh, necessary Propped all and what have you. I and this is one thing I had in mind had talking to the mind, governor and, about. And I thought that having someone of the stature of the vice president of the United States here, the governor and the other pseudo politicos of the state would be forced. They couldn't afford to ignore him. They'd be forced to come to the convention and sit on the platform with him. I think we'd want to invite him and have him up there. 
And they get coverage from the, from the uh, radio and the television and the newspapers that I don't think you can get any other way to get. They couldn't afford to ignore the Vice President of the United States. Yeah, they well, I mean, here's the other side of the coin. Here's the other side of the coin. Unless we approach it like I'm talking about, with the situation in Washington being what it is, and the fact that Humphrey and Eastland are just like this, and the fact that Eastland and Paul Johnson are just like this, right. that we're going to have to work out an understanding, and these things have to be, they're going to consult with one another. Right. He's not going to accept our invitation without <coughs> it meeting the approval of Eastland and Paul Johnson, to be honest about it. So my thinking was that we first approach the governor. We invite him to attend. Some other things I want to talk to him about. We're getting on pretty good speaking terms now. I bet you didn't know that. Uh, we have been quietly working with them and have helped them get some things done over there. And we're going to try to do the same thing this time. And I believe in being honest, Paul Johnson has done a commendable job in the face of everything. So I think we have to. That's we have to take all this into consideration. Better than any of us ever expected him to do. Well, far yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I certainly agree with that statement. Does this meet your approval that I make an attempt to discuss this matter with the governor? And if things can be worked out, that we do extend an invitation to Vice President Humphrey. By all means, sir. Might be a good idea to get this in the record. Somebody wants to offer a motion to that effect? I will. Second. Motion is that I consult with the governor about addressing our convention, as well as inviting the vice president of the United States. You may need to contact Jim in this round. Might have to. Any further discussion on that? Not all in favor of the motion signify for saying aye. 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 All opposed? I thought we would make an effort also to invite the lieutenant governor while we're at it, as well as the governor, uh, William Munner, who is the secondary treasurer, a potential candidate for governor. We invite him as, by virtue of his official position. I thought we would make an effort to invite Evelyn Gandy. We need to get uh, a woman or two on our program if possible. Yeah, that's a good speech. Does anybody see anything speaker. wrong with this? Uh, frankly, the, the better public officials we have, the state officials, as we have in the past, we'll try to invite them. I think the them. appropriate in her case, she's heading the welfare division. Very appropriate, no. Uh, uh, very appropriate. something that Labor is vitally yeah. concerned with. Yeah, yeah. Jack Tuff. And Jack Tuff. I say our state yeah. officials, the better caliber as we have in the past, this has been the approach. Now, in addition to these uh, prospective speakers, we thought that we'd try to get one or two congressmen or senators that have some stature. What do you think about Hale Boggs? Trying to get him down. Boggs is the uh, whip, I believe, in the House is official position, isn't it now? Boggs is also a native Mississippian, born and raised in what is past Christian? Right. On the coast. His mother and sister still live there, as a matter of fact. And Bob knows him quite well. As the old boy down there, he can do that. Uh, he's a uh, real, he's a, a real fine guy, and it's not too far away, you see. And we thought we'd make an effort to get uh, Representative Bob to address the convention. Uh, talking about Bob, Bob's sister in the last president election. Of course, she don't want this out too much on account she's in the real estate business. But she worked with us one Saturday night till three o'clock, getting out literature through the mail, and she worked with us that Sunday morning till three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And she is real democratic. Well, she's fine for us uh, And she mom, is daughter. really 100% labor. Well, we, we, uh, we'll do what we can, let's put it that way, with your approval to try to get some people of stature from the Congress, let's leave it that way, to address the next convention. Now, do any of you have any suggestions of speakers uh, other than this? Uh, I'm gonna, I've already talked to Bill Snetzler. I don't think the boss Meany can't don't get out much to state conventions. Don't get too far from Washington, but 
I think that we got every reason in the world to expect Bill Stisler to address this convention. He never has. And I think this would be the time to get him down here. And I've talked to him about it, and I've told him that. And he's told me that he couldn't afford to come down here and say something that he wouldn't say any place else. And of course, we wouldn't expect him not to. Does anyone see anything wrong with me inviting Bill Snessler to address this convention? No, no. Well, Claude, if Bill makes his usual speech, yeah. and he has one each mm -hmm. year, uh, mm -hmm. almost a necessity that he makes everywhere, right. with, with slight variations, Right. he wouldn't say anything here that he couldn't say anywhere in the world. Well, that's what I try to tell him in San Francisco. Because he, he makes, I've heard him a number of times, he makes no reference ordinarily to the race situation. Mm -hmm. You're about how the bankers are stealing the, the right. United States. And this is one that I want him to make here. Yeah. Penitentiary and labor leaders and that kind of a thing. <laughs> I don't think we have anything to cheer on. Though. Somebody want to offer a motion that, uh, that, that I invite him on behalf of the executive board to address this convention? The matter has been discussed and passed by unanimous vote. Yeah. I second the motion he made. In the we there. have any discussion? Not all in favor of the motion signify for saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried and so on. Now, what about some of the other people in the labor movement, presidents of international unions and people like this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know whether he could do it or not, but if you could, uh, if you could get our international president down to address it, he makes a, he makes a sure enough Jim Dandy speech. I don't think you'd be sorry that you invited him if he could get off and come. Well, how about uh, some of the rest of Joe uh, Keenan or some other I'd like to see Joe Keenan, and I was thinking... Uh, well, I invited him, you know, the last time, and, uh, and uh, invited Freeman and mm -hmm. said if he could come, we'd like to have Joe. I forget what it was. Uh, he wasn't able to come. Why don't we just do this? We'll just make an effort to get several. We'll send out an invitation for Towski, the rest of them. Particularly the, the ones that have the largest membership. The largest membership, the Cartman, the CWA, the Amalgamated, uh, people like this. I don't I know if Potowski could or would come. You know, he addressed the state convention here about yes. six, eight years ago. Yeah. And uh, whether he had, would, would come back that soon. Well, if it's all right with you, what we'll do is to send out invitations to several of the international presidents try to get uh, at least one or two to address our next convention. I'd love for Joe Byrne to get an invitation. I doubt very seriously. He won't come. He could come. Yeah, he's been, it hasn't been too long since he was here, and I guess he probably looks at that. Of course, what probably would happen here, uh, some of these fellows might agree to send an assistant or a vice president. Yeah, well, sometimes you get that. Yeah, well, I thought that we, in addition to this, that we would invite the director of organization and you, director, Bill Kircher, also. He now. makes a wonderful job. Uh, the department heads, you know, uh, these people. Thought we'd do all of this. Now, what do you think? Well, I'm still thinking about the need of getting uh, some uh, prominent women on the program. I've been scratching my brain about some possibilities. Uh, Margaret Price, who is the, uh, on the National Democratic Committee in charge of uh, women affairs, I guess, I forget what exact title is, chairman. Vice Chairman of the National Committee, makes a wonderful speech. I was just, uh, just wondering if we do this, should we invite the Republican National Committee woman down also? But this is a possibility to invite Margaret Price down. We had Esther uh, Peterson two or three years ago. I, we might be able to get her. She is, uh, what is her official position? She's an assistant to the president and a consumer marshal for market in fact. In the absence of this, uh, we might think about Esther Peterson again. What about the ladies on the board members here? Do you all have any suggestions about the women speakers? Anybody that you would like to invite? Well, how about y'all give us a little thought so now? Do you have any, does anybody see any problems that we might create by inviting Margaret Price? I think Margaret Price would probably come down. 
I don't see any problems there, but I am inclined to believe that uh, if you invite her, that you should invite the Republicans. Because after all, uh, of course, we are predominantly Democratic, but we're not we're not totally Democratic. Yeah, we're we're way the Democratic have quite a few yeah. Republicans in our ranks. Yeah. Well, Claude? Yes. Let me butt in again, please. You might have to give consideration if the vice president comes to extending the length of the convention a half day. Yeah. And I've gone through that mess a couple of times. Yeah. Him. Well, when he when comes, secret, that's it. When the Secret Service takes over, right. they pretty well stop your activity and uh, they stop everything going on in the hotel. And you just don't transact any business. And yeah. I think you might better have in your pocket the authority to extend yeah. the convention if it becomes necessary. That's a good point. <coughs> Very good. Let's Very get good. that on the, on the minutes. Let me add to what Bob said, because I was down in Baton Rouge last spring. So was I. I know Bob was referring to this. Of course, I left just before Hubert got there. I didn't figure they could stand both of us. See? <laughs> <laughs> but I could tell already that they had already put the lid on the hotel there. And it was just, it was a mess. And another thing, you know, I understand, and Bob knows more about this, I understand those people had to sit in their seats some four or five hours because of a delay and whatnot. Of course, now they had a situation there. The president's plane that carried the vice president could not land in Baton Rouge. That plane had to land in New Orleans. The governor's lighter, Harry <coughs> Graff, had to go to New Orleans, bring him to Baton Rouge. And of course, in New Orleans, they had to have a brief press conference and all the finale, you know. Of course, here, we got something here at Baton Rouge, haven't got, we got a base where they can land in Air Force One and all that business. But I would hope, and I'm glad Bob brought this up, because I have talked to quite a few people that attended that Louisiana convention. They said, God forbid going through another ordeal like they did, because they got all fouled up and he was just late ridiculously late, you know, getting him in the convention hall. And several hours before he even gets to the airport, they've done stood you in a corner somewhere and you dare some to move until he's out of town and gone. It was so, tight enough that that listen. morning when they put the lid on the hotel, we had breakfast served to us in, uh, in plastic, in paper plates and, uh, and plastic cups for coffee because the Secret Service locked the doors and wouldn't let the dishwashers come in the hotel. I went through that whole mess down there, and uh, I was a sergeant at arms at the recent convention in San Francisco to guard him when he came in the convention there. So, one of well, the Mr. officers Chairman, of the state well, council walked by me and I said, yeah. "Buddy, I hope I last through this." <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yeah, I, was in San I move that, that the chair be granted the convention. authority to extend the length of the convention if, if necessary. It's necessary. All right. I'll take if the vice president accepts my invitation. Have any further discussion on the motion? Not all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Now I'd like to suggest this to you that you give this convention speaker thing some thought. If you, you come up with somebody in mind that you think should be invited, just drop us a note and we'll see if we can't take care of that. I think that takes care of that part of it. <coughs> now, Still on the convention, uh, I've jotted down a number of subjects that should be covered by resolutions at the convention. Most of them uh, have been done before, but as a matter of procedure and, and as a matter of calling these things again to the attention of the audience, the need of them and so forth, uh, this should be done. I'll go over with you the list of things that I've jotted down, and if I've missed something, then you make a note of it. Resolution on setting up coke committees in each local union. Um, yes, go on. Sean. You want to go on? What is it? What, what? Are they hot? Morrison. No, we wanted some coffee. Some coffee. Oh, okay. Is anybody? Is there, just stop it a minute. There. He's going to here. Then we'll come back and decide. Uh, we'll set up some subcommittees on people to draft, be responsible for drafting the resolution on behalf of the executive board. Uh, Coke committees in each local union. Uh, wide uh, women activity departments in each local unions and central bodies and so forth. 
a union label resolution, union label and services as we've done before. Organizing, one on organizing. And if the Vietnam situation is still on, one in support of the administration's position on Vietnam. Then I talked with Brother Schaefer about the need of, of us submitting a resolution about the REA situation here in the state. Well, that, it'll take a little time to explain this to you. The F of LCO traditionally has supported legislation uh, affecting these co-ops. They get special tax consideration and what have you. Yet, in this state and particularly, and this applies in some other states as well, when the people who work for RE try to organize, they fight us tooth and toenail. Colorado, the state council at Colorado submitted a resolution at the FLCL convention about this. And we call upon the national AFLCO to advise these co-ops that if we don't receive more cooperation from them than we have in the past, that we're going to stop supporting legislation beneficial to them. Uh, Brother Schaefer might want to talk about this a little bit. They have just recently had two organizing campaigns with two of these uh, co-ops, one at uh, Yazoo City and one at Clinton. They won one at Clinton and lost and one at Yazoo City, but in both cases, they fought the efforts right down to the wire. And I think personally it would serve a real purpose for us to lay this thing out in a resolution. What's your opinion, Jack? Well, I think it's uh, a definite need for it. Uh, we are dealing with a group of people, and I guess it's the most unique group that you'll uh, find anywhere. Of course, co-ops is an old established thing. They came back from uh, the 30s under Roosevelt's administration. At that time, they were pretty well set up uh, and isolated from any controls at all and given free range as far as money was concerned. Now, they capitalized on the rural community exclusively. And I did not realize the ignorance that existed among the people, if you pardon the expression, but we have grown men uh, that we've been working with that can't even write their name that's working for co-ops. They're solely dependent upon one man, a manager of these co-ops. And what he says is the Lord's word. And he dominates his board of directors, and in many cases we have found, apparently, not even uh, annual meetings to elect board members to these co-ops boards. Where they're supposed to have a minimum of seven members, uh, we find one case where they have four. And uh, it's a hand-picked group. Uh, we have been successful. I say we have. Uh, maybe that's a little misleading. But Capital Elected is under close scrutiny now of the National Director of Co-ops. And we're hoping that we can crack a little of the ice that we're running into uh, through this man. Well, I think this resolution will have that effect. Uh, right. And I'm almost convinced that you're not going to touch them too, too much uh, from the level that we're encountering here. If we, whatever we do, we're going to have to do it from the top down. Because uh, the, on. the people uh, have had their ways in uh, free reign so long until uh, they they are an isolated group and you just don't touch them. Every manager that you run into is a little uh, tin god sitting on the pedestal and he's hard to get off that pedestal. Well, let me ask this question in relation to that. Uh, aren't those directors supposed to be elected from the uh, people that they, uh, the they serve? Right. Yes, but Robert, they start off with a nominating committee that nominates them, and that's their own ballot. You right. know, anybody get elected has to be rolled in. Right. It's impossible to campaign as well as one of them. What I'm 
was getting at. Uh, leave a boat boat. Excuse me for butting in, but that I'm in one of them. <laughs> so am I. That's the reason I'm particularly in. <laughs> yeah, he's on the singing river. I used to be on the singing river myself. What I was getting at there, nobody ever knows when the hell they're going to elect you for it, right? Well, we, that's what I we, think we get cards on that, yeah, but at the same time, it's already cut and dried. It would be a booby buck in the power structure that is impossible to win. Well, that may be true in some cases on localities, but in our particular locality, I think maybe we might be able to bust it through. Yeah. And I was asking for information. Yeah. But in your resolution, you might call the attention to the delegates on the need of participating, becoming active in these co-ops, and trying to change the atmosphere this way as well. Frankly, I think what the effect of this resolution will be is to cause the, 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 the people in Washington to take a close look and probably bring some pressure to bear. And if it does that, we will have accomplished, accomplished the objective, right? There could be some legislation right. there that would take care right. of the situation. Right, absolutely. I think the first move should be that uh, it's mandatory yeah. that every customer co-op be sent a written notice of when their uh, annual meeting right. We might have this checked out. This, this might be the law already. I'm not too sure about this. This might be in the law already. But I used to receive notices myself. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Yeah, I you know how I receive yeah. official notice. Like you Brother Taylor says, they got a pretty right range slate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, well, is it agreed? <laughs> is it agreed that we? draft a resolution along this line on behalf of the board for the next convention. Is that agreed? I think it's right. Right. I so move, Mr. We have a motion that the, that the executive board submit a resolution concerning the uh, REA co-ops. We have any further discussion on that motion? in Columbus last year. Yeah. Not all in favor of the motion signify for C&I. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Now, I'd like to delegate Brother Schaefer to be responsible for drafting this resolution, and I will lend him whatever assistance I can. Now, do we have any other subject matters that, that members of the board think that should be also covered in the resolution? In resolutions? In the past, Claude, we've uh, uh, had resolutions on uh, something uh, on the state level to handle labor problems. I think we ought to re, re uh, have another resolution uh, this year. The I don't think we'll labor? get yeah. I don't think we'll get one, but the I think we ought to. I don't think we'll let us forget about it. The Department of Labor. That's a very good suggestion. It might also be a good idea for us to draft a resolution concerning the need and additional changes to the National Labor Relations Act because of some of the activities uh, that we've been going through here in the state. Uh, Bob's not here right now, but uh, you remember we had this conference on organizing problems, and the main purpose of that was to bring to the people's attention in Washington the apparent need for some changes in the act other than repeal of 14B. Uh, one of the major problems in organizing activities in the state now is the, is the activity of these third parties, the business groups and what have you. Uh, these are the people that kick your brains out, yet <clears throat> because of the way the law is phrased, you must prove that they're in collision with, collusion with, uh, with the employer in order to uh, have an election set aside because of this activity. And after that conference, we had a young man from the uh, labor, the House Labor Committee come to Mississippi and sit down and talk with some of our people. Uh, I wasn't able to make that meeting, but we had uh, games with you at that meeting, or was it Ed? I believe it was Ed Blair. Ed, Ed, Ed made it. I didn't get it. people, but anyhow, some people that had some experience. And they loaded him up with all this stuff, and we hope that the House Labor Committee will make some recommendations along this line. Now, if this hasn't been done, uh, by the time we go into convention, I think it would serve a definite purpose for us to also submit a resolution along this line in need of some additional changes in the law. Is that agreed? Yeah. I will be responsible for that. Well, I'll get Bob to help me. And uh, depending on the situation, if the Congress hasn't acted, and even if they have that uh, pending legislation, we can still make it fit. Sure. Okay? There's one other item that I would like to inject into that on the idea, Claude, if it's possible. 
is in relation to our director in this area. Now he's got the name of being the worst in the nation of his decisions and policies. The uh, director of the board and right. uh, 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 yeah. uh, John Liebus. Yeah, well, any question about this, this is part of the problem. Uh, again, I think in considering this resolution, if we can phrase it in such a fashion to cover this, what you're talking about, I'll go over this with Bob and, uh, and get him to help us on drafting that resolution. We we'll take this in consideration. He had apparently that they're having more trouble out of the regional office in New Orleans than any place else. You know, I've been to several conventions and conferences throughout the country. And every one I've gone in where this is this question has come up, they all have the same opinion. Yeah. Well I talked to Bob about this and we'll we'll come up with a resolution on that. All right, uh, we have any other subject matters before uh, I going to want to get the subject matters before we start appointing subcommittee. Claude, I suppose Claude. we might assume excuse, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh we might assume, I guess, maybe, that the legislature will have completed its session and maybe yeah. have gone home by the time yeah. the convention. Otherwise, there'd be a lot of areas in which right. we might need right. to uh, right. act. Right, right, right. This is very true. And I can tell you now that I've got on the agenda here uh, a number of legislative items to discuss and consider and take positions on here this morning. Well, that'll be fine. That's See, I've got that on the now. Now, before we leave the resolution, now, uh, I may be out of order. I need a little information. I don't know if this should come as a resolution or if the board can act on this. But I stand to be corrected here. I understand you and Brother Knight haven't had a increase in pay for quite a while. Well, and we uh, uh, see when was it? Last board meeting. Last board meeting. Last board meeting. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. It was, uh, well, it was at the last, right, the last, well, not the last board meeting, meeting. The, the board meeting right after our last right convention. After that's right. That's right. Well, that's been about two years ago. Yeah. Now, has this board got the authority to raise your salaries or it has to come as a resolution? Well, the board uh, traditionally has set the salaries of the officers and employees of the organization. Well, the Constitution uh, is silent. Constitution is silent on the matter. I, I think that uh, we we've all had a round of raises since you have, as far as our job is concerned. And you fellows are really dedicated. You're putting out all effort. You're building this thing up. And uh, to where uh, I believe that we have the best state air prevail CIO we've ever had. And uh, I think, and I'm going to make a motion that you fellow's salary be raised. Now, I'm going to leave it open in the motion that whatever, if it's considered the amount, we'll discuss that before we take the vote. I don't know if the board will want to stick with the 3% of guideline. Guideline, or uh, <laughs> I don't think the president would get off the limb too far if we go a little above that. Well, I don't know, Brother Nick Kish. The president had a fit about 35,000 people in New York getting a few bucks. 35,000 people is going to cause inflation. Well, uh, that's what I had in mind. That's what I had in mind. Uh, could Claude and uh, Knight calls inflation in Jackson. Well, let me, let me say this. I appreciate you bringing this up, brother, in any case. A uh, number of factors I think has to be considered uh, by the board. As you recall, uh, at the board meeting where the salary adjustment was made, we had Stanton Smith there, and he's the one that made the recommendation. And it was largely based upon the fact that we were getting that uh, subsidy from the organization. And that I think before anything's done, if it's done, that uh, we should consult with Stanton about the, the wishes of the board uh, on this thing. Also, you might... Uh, well, uh, because I'm still thinking about the 
the financial status, we're still struggling, you know, and if we, this would be an additional cost. I realize that. Well, uh, couldn't I make the motion that if it could be provided? And, yeah. I don't know what kind of political implications Mr. Schaefer, yes. Oh, well, I told him I was going to What do you think of this okay. approach? <clears throat> that it be handled just like it was before, and then about the same time. I think we handled it yeah. right after the, right after the, the convention. Yeah. with Stanton Smith present the money bags. Yeah. In other words, our our financial condition be reviewed at our board meeting right. at the convention and, yeah. and try to uh, come up with I think it would be more appropriate to do this after the convention and do it before the convention. Uh, I don't know. There's going to be some political right. implications yeah. involved in this thing if you know nobody needs a salary increase any more than me and Tom, I guess, right now. But, uh, I think that these factors have to be considered, the money especially, the money. That's right. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. And I think it would probably be better to defer action on this. Uh, Claude, is my yeah. memory faulty, or do I remember that at the meeting you referred to, Stanton Smith uh, recommended this in <coughs> for you two gentlemen, and uh, indicated that in his opinion he thought the board should look at the picture a little bit further down the road and see if an additional increase could be provided. Did yeah, he know? made that statement. That's what I thought I remember. Yeah. Let's uh, not leave out the fact that that includes the office help. Thank you. Well, we have a contract <laughs> with them that we have to negotiate with the best major right here. <laughs> That's a heck of a note. You have to sit on the board with them and then negotiate with them. That's we a real complicated see. situation, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> well, it just occurred to me we're probably all in, the, in accord with the Brother Nick case, but thinking of the, of the source of the money as well as some of the uh, other items that come into this picture and it was handled very easily before and effectively. Yeah. That, well, I was fixing to add my two cents in. That, uh, that this might could be a, a similar yeah. approach. Uh -huh. And that now could be a similar approach to what yeah. the way which we handled it before. Uh -huh. I think that would be a good idea. And what I was fixing to add to this is so far as the office help is concerned, see, they're on the contract and it's provided for an annual increase for them and Claude and uh, Thomas or not, you know, in that respect, well, of course, uh, I think they should be considered right along with the cost of living as long as everybody else. We wouldn't want to find ourselves with the office helping making more money than them, huh? <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate your expression on this thing. Uh, <clears throat> I really do. I well, I say, uh, I say likewise. Yeah. Uh, we will, of course, have to schedule a board meeting prior to the convention, uh, take care of a number of items. At least we'll have to have one that soon. I mean, if we, if we know we're going to have to have that. We may have to have one before then, but we will schedule one prior to the convention. And it might be best to wait, consider this thing, and get the facts and figures together. How long off is that? About six months? Uh, there might uh, be some people think that this thing Father, we are thankful for thy leadership through our three days of convention. We pray that the things that have been said might enlighten us to the spirit which thou would have us to live. Father, we pray that we might each seek further guidance by thy Holy Spirit, that we might be saved. Why don't we do that? Why don't we just let us get the information together, consult with Stanton Smith, try to have him at that board meeting after the convention and see what can be done on salary adjustment at that time. Is that agreeable? That's 
Yeah, he might well, appreciate your suggestions. Your thinking on this. Understanding that it is the consensus uh, <laughs> uh, opinion of this party. Yeah. 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 I, I was just fixing to say uh, <laughs> that Bud <laughs> case over here, and, and I think uh, it would satisfy him in, in, a, in a motion that uh, that this board uh, begin to consider an increase for the, the take you know, hundred advice. We got to take hundred advice, when we got the facts and the figures and know what's what's what then uh execute this order whichever way it is when we know what the financial status is what the possible we raises can be and all that right. kind of stuff uh, okay we'll 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 appreciate your thinking your feeling on this thing and we'll i think everybody knows what i meant but i want to be a little more specific uh, yeah. to do it now might even bring opposition for some individual members of the board, as well as the people holding office uh, at the convention that you wouldn't otherwise have. I agree with that. Exactly. I agree with yeah. that. Well, let's defer action. I'm going to the first time, James. <laughs> I, I, I want to be here. Let's, uh, <laughs> is it agreed? Is it agreed? We don't, agreed. We don't need a motion. Oh, yes. no, is it agreed no, that this matter be taken up at the board meeting after the convention that we will assemble the necessary material and try to have Stanton Smith present. Would it be agreeable? Sure. And Mother Knight and myself appreciate your thinking and the fact that you're so fit to bring it up this morning. The board is in favor and recommend. I'm trying. It will be in the record that the board is in favor of an increased party. And we'll finally resolve the question at the, yeah, the board meeting as a committee. All right, fine. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can not get some subcommittees set up to draft resolutions. Yes. I would not have been, this might have been covered if it was, and just inform me. I think one thing we ought to consider here in resolutions, and I think it will all depend on the situation at a later point. We've talked here briefly about the governor, the way he's handled himself, and the face of the situation that when he's taking off. It might be uh, proper and in order, and I think we have a responsibility if things continue, that this executive board present a resolution and the convention go on record in commending Paul Johnson for the, the job that he's done. But as I say, I think it'll all depend on things that happen between now and then. This can be done at a later date. But I think we've got a responsibility to do this. The guy's entitled to it, put it on. That's that's exactly Make right. Our, better relations could be better. anybody disagree with that? Club. Make our feelings known. Do you we know. have anybody that disagrees with this suggestion? I don't disagree with it if I understood it right. In other words... It depends on what, what transpires between now and then. Uh, All right. I tell you this: if he hadn't have taken a stand for law and order, we'd have had a lot more Good problems man. in this state. You better that believe it. But the business community yeah. begin to back him in that, and also right. do, we'd have had a lot more problems while we've had. Right. If somebody hadn't have started. All it. right. You better yeah. believe that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll add that to it, and uh, and I will be responsible. The devil is due. <laughs> I will be responsible to see that this resolution is drafted. I'll uh, get with maybe Brother Schaefer and Brother Mike, one or two more, and see what we can come up with. We'll try to do this as conveniently as possible. Right now, on the, on the, uh, on the COPE uh, uh, committees and on the white committees, uh, let's see if we can ask Brother Knight and Sister Kelly to be responsible for drafting those two resolutions. We'll try to make this as convenient as possible. It might be that uh, you'll want to, let's add uh, the other young lady there, Ms. Davis, to, the, to that, yeah, uh, the part. three of you. That takes care of the two, coat and wide. On the union label, should get Brother Jackson and uh, Russell Mike Mayer, who's not here, we'll have to advise him of that. And Brother Taylor, I think, should be on that committee because you want to include union services as well as union labels. 
we can furnish you with copies of resolutions that's been adopted in the past that you might to go by if you'd like to have this, that. This we would. All right. All right. Okay. Now on organizing. See how many volunteers we can find on organizing. Uh, Brother Robbins, Brother Nikes, and uh, who else do we want? We've got Jack, he's got an assignment already. How about you, Bert? That's Hi. right. We uh, don't have, that's right. John Gillespie's not here, and this would be a good committee for him to be on. Let's put John Gillespie on that then. You? Brother Robbins, Brother Nikes, and Brother <coughs> Gillespie. Who's the other four of us, right? What? Three? No, I'll be three unless Bert wants Bert. No, I in your I, condition, I think you can not to leave you off of, the, yeah. of these subcommittees. Yeah. <coughs> All right. On the, uh, Brother Schaefer is going to draft the one on the REA situation. We've got the Vietnam. Uh, resolution yet to draw, and the one on the Department of Labor. A brother Goodman and brother, let's see who else is in here, we haven't yet got on a committee other than Bert. Bounds. 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 Brother Bounds and Bounds. brother Goodman haven't yet got an assignment. Um, which one would you rather consider, the Vietnam situation or the Department of Labor? It might be that that uh, the Department of Labor would be the best air for you to cover and let me uh, be responsible for the Vietnam Resolution and try to draw it up in conformity with the National FLC office position. Would that be agreeable? That you and Brother Goodman yes, be sir, responsible for drafting a resolution on the need of the Department of Labor in Mississippi. And that takes care of it, doesn't it? Yeah, the subject here yeah, is Brother Knight and myself will be responsible for one on amending the governor, <coughs> organizing union labor by it now, and so forth. Yes, that, that takes care of it. Change the National Labor Relations Act. Oh, yeah. Bob, and Bob, Bob was going to do that. Yeah, Bob and, uh, and, uh, and myself will, will be responsible for that. For what? That's the resolution on change the LRB. <laughs> I'll go over this with you. You were outside. Let's take a break and get the coffee. What do you say? Your family getting off on a part time basis, maybe from time to time, and how much time they can spend in this particular situation. And the executive committee authorized us to uh, put her on this position, in, you know, on a temporary basis like this. Part time situation. Of course, uh, if we put her on, I think about time to time we'd be able to use her in some of the other areas.
situation to you. Um, we got in this political campaign and the uh, fact that I was staying in here with the legislature practically all the time, I felt that if I could sign my card to Mrs. Kelly, that she could have one of the vehicles to work that thing. So we give her the best one talks and he takes mine. I got about 95,000 on it. He went out on the road with it one time, come back and advise me for a while, because I knew this. <laughs> <laughs> we wound up having to put the thing in the garage and spend some money on it, and it was still a while, so we consulted with the committee about the need of a new automobile so Miss Kelly wouldn't be ashamed of what she's riding around in down there. I wasn't ashamed, I was scared. The end result, <laughs> the end result was that we wound up buying a new automobile here about uh, six weeks or a month ago, Dice. Right? Six, six weeks ago. Yeah, they have a made statement on <laughs> Frankly, I think we, this uh, group here, as a result of some of my expenses, need to set a policy on this automobile thing one way or the other. Had we traded this automobile off, I think around 70 or 75,000 miles, we would have saved several hundred dollars in repair bills and what have you. <coughs> uh, I want to open this thing up here for discussion on this automobile thing. Jack is actually a finish, you know what I'm talking about. Of course, they referred this thing to the Jake Committee before, but I think this might ought to be dropped by situation now is this. Station wagon is how many thousand they got on? About a well about, about 83, 83, something 80, like 80, 82, 82, 000 000. miles. It's about to fall apart. <coughs> We're gonna have to trade it off or junk it or do something with it pretty soon. I don't think there's any question what we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do something about the other automobile. Need two tires. Need two tires. May I ask a question? We have some international representatives <coughs> International for their cars. What they do uh, is their policy. I mean, they've had experience with cars through the years. I'm glad you broke that up. I was going to ask the same question. There. Have you tried to run a basis? Well, <coughs> we try to work out something. What was that we try to work out that time? We thought it could be worked out well, on the, on the MLC. We, uh, we? Yeah, we contacted some people, uh, but uh, as I recall, <coughs> This was gone into three years ago when we bought these old records. Got it? I'm going to say something on that. Uh, our company has a subsidiary company, the, what they call a national city truck rental company, and they also uh, buy automobiles from you know, people. Uh, and we have several cars. might be that you could work out a pretty good deal with them. I, I heard it said, and I don't know because I never uh, had any occasion to want to rent one, but I, I heard it said that they are cheaper than any of these 
another rental agency, and they will. I know rent you a car, <coughs> one or two, or whatever, how many you want. Oh. Might work out. Oh, uh, Claude, have you ever figured out what it costs you to operate your car? I'm not including the <coughs> capital investment. Um, not not exactly that way, but uh, according to the information we've been able to pick up from various sources, uh, we can purchase the automobile and operate it cheaper than we can from a rental agency. Now the problem here centers around the fact that when do you trade the car in? If you, in other words, if you're going to run the thing, do you wear it out? Then you're going to lose money on it. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think probably if, uh, if we could set a policy here that. When the automobile got to say 70,000 miles on it, we traded it in, uh, we wouldn't have to worry about it. We, we had a board meeting or the committee or something to take action when the thing was falling apart. This is really what I'm getting at. You see what I'm talking about? Now, we've tried to uh, find out about this rental thing, but uh, because of the limited. Uh, well, Claude, I can give the information on our international man. I mean, what the cost is on that. It might could be possible that maybe that you people could hook up some way on that uh, basis. I don't know. That's what TVI. That's, one of these. That's what TVI. That's eighty-five dollars a month. A new car over fifteen months. And all all you do is pay for the gas and oil, the wash and grease. They take care of the insurance. The insurance, the taxes, tags, everything. Now what North Carolina does, they get them from TVI too, but they get them through the woodwork. Now, you, you got to balance it for figuring out what this car costs you in terms of money, in terms of depreciation, and in terms of upkeep. Because when you compare it with the TVI rate, the only thing that you're paying, they're paying insurance too. That's right. They're paying insurance on the car plus liability. That's right. And when, when they send you the car, you know, you're going to go buy, or pay tax and buy a tag for that. They pay, they for, pay that. for that. They yeah. pay for that. That's right. They pay for all of that. You think it might be able to work somehow on the international union? Well, I'd, I'd be glad to contact my international law, uh, I mean, to see if they could uh, put the, the council up on that end. Uh, woodworkers, I mean, that's, 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 that's the same amount. In fact, I, th I think the amalgamated people have to have what the same deal with the same people. You might be able to, to, to. You people use a different type of car than we do. You might be able what to. What do you all use? That's a six of the children. I was a Bell Air, and yours is a. No, I was a Bell Air. I was a Bell Air. I'm talking about the amalgamated people. Oh, and I believe I believe the amalgamated people don't have a radio. We have a radio. Yes. You got a belly out there. <coughs> well, let me ask you something. Do you this think you can make a better deal? Do you think you can make a better deal on one of these rental things you begin by purchasing the car like we've been doing? I believe you Somebody's can. Somebody's going to have to make some money out of the deal. How do they make money? How much do you pay for Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I mean, uh, General Motors owns this thing, bro. Yeah. This TVI out of Brooklyn, New York. Well, I don't see the 25 cents. It all depends on what you have to pay for your car. That's right. If you can buy it cheap enough, you can you can buy well, keep it cheaper. Keep this in mind now. You've, you've got you to you you be <laughs> car over 15 months. That's right. How much do you have to pay for your car? How much do you get off of it? Well, this last one we got, of course, the thing we had in Hawaii, and we got it for a $1,900 trade in. The best deal he got bids out of all of their major. In other words, you paid nineteen hundred dollars difference. How many months did you have? I don't mind. We had it in five or six hours. We had it in uh, thirty-nine months. And, well, I think I left one thing out there. So another thing. I mean, if you break down the middle of the highway anywhere, they, they pay for the towing end of the thing. They pay all. They, don't, they, don't they stand all major. <laughs> they stand it right. all the time. They all like tired. And we rent hours out of Union Leasing Company out of Chicago. All we do is pay for the gas and oil, that's all. And the wash. The international bedroom, they figure they can get by cheaper. Well, let, me throw this in, let me throw this in on top of what's been said. Last week, in, in an issue of the Wall Street Journal of last week, there was quite an article about all of these automobile leasing companies changing their philosophy. Previously, it was that they had to rent a great number of automobiles to one uh, outfit. Now then, they're going after individual people, mm -hmm. one by one, to lease a car to. So the philosophy has changed. Uh, you can get them probably either through some international or through AFL-CIO, and if that <coughs> don't work, you can get them one by one. Directly, you TVI. From the basis of the figures you do, 
Chris Gay, though, if you paid $1,900 for this car, <coughs> running 39 months, that's less than $50 a month rental. That's only depreciation, though. You got your insurance, you got your tires. Yeah, that's, that, that included the old car that was traded in. Sure, yeah, that's right. Well, this other deal does, too, because they have 15 months they take it and they sell it, you see, so that's part of the trade deal on that. Well, they wholesale that car. They're buying it about 20% <coughs> off the list price. Right. What is you? Who, who finds your car for you? Union Leasing Company, that's your car. Larry Paul's old one. Yeah, he said to run with the rental deal on Practice the same thing he's talking about. However, our rental is a little higher on those Oldsmobiles than it is on the Chevrolet. Well, that's like your Oldsmobile. What's how much on it, John? Uh, <coughs> now, this time, I think that has been changed to contract this time because we're going from the dyma dynamic to this jet star that they come out with this time. So I think we're going a little cheaper, possibly around $20 a month cheaper. At the present time, they're paying 120 Well, I tell you, I don't know. We can uh, get this thing right if we had late. Well, this, is this position them called we need a new car now, right? Yeah, we need one now. It's right. way to travel. Oh, absolutely. Well, this ain't going to cost us a lot of money like this other one. It's going to break down, right? Well, I, I would be glad to check with International and see what I uh, <coughs> do on that basis. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we can sit here and discuss this thing back and forth. If you need a way to right. travel, I'll make a motion that uh, they trade this thing before I get a new car. Yeah, we get this, and then we might be able to check this thing out, maybe I'll in the future. Motion. Motion. You will? Second the motion. <clears throat> in the meantime, though, I think you should investigate Yes, yeah, so we get this one replaced, we'll have a little time. time and maybe we can do check into this thing about what you're talking about. Maybe we can set a policy and maybe work out something in the, on the future that we can go ahead and work into. I don't think we can do it now, because this ain't going to fall apart. You know? Well, that's, that's I right. I mean, I'm in agreement with that, but I think the run will base it. We, ran it, we wrestled with this same problem in Tennessee when I was the state organization there. We were able to buy cars at $500 off a list price for and Chevy. Now that's better than 25%. Or it's, just, it's about 25%. You can do that by a year and come out easy, better on a, on a purchase than you go on a rental. That's what my local union did. On this Ford that we just bought, we got $556 fleet discount. Uh, what you got? Yeah. <coughs> It'll be hard to beat, I think, what you prepared for this. Now, the motion is that, what was the motion on? That we <coughs> trade the car. That we trade the car in and get right. a new car for the station wagon. We're on car for the station wagon or repeat the station wagon. <laughs> well, wait, the way to travel, whichever way you want. Actually, the station wagon is, uh, you sure put in everything in the car that you can haul in the station wagon. Yeah, I can get those boxes out of the car. You can yeah. <laughs> Of course, now all station wagons, some people say they've got them, they ride uh, <coughs> good, but that's the roughest riding one vehicle I've ever got in in my life. I agree with you. There's not a spring about that station wagon. Not a spring you've got. I don't frankly think that uh, we first bought the thing, I thought the idea of the station wagon was right, but I don't see where we've got much advantage out of the station wagon. And the station wagon, you also talk about $700 yeah. more well, money. Quite a bit more expensive. Well, if he can make out a good deal for both Volkswagen, I think it's probably all he's getting. Or can make a good drive for Volkswagen? I'll just take the same. He'd never be able to keep his feet inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, would you have to have a motion for us and he buy a Volkswagen? <laughs> the way to travel. I don't know. Ross, <laughs> you and I are good friends, ain't we, buddy? The way to travel. That, that, that well, is. That would be to bicycle, too. I have to a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's well, just, let's uh, well, I'll put it this way. If you think that you ride a bicycle, well, make it a bicycle. <laughs> a motorcycle with a sidecar. Uh, we need to do more discussion on that motion. <laughs> Not all in favor of the motion signify it by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion can't sort of dodge. I think that uh, you'll let you another one on the way to break in. Sure. We'll let you break this one in also. I don't really know what I've got. I don't know what I've got. We got a we got another matter that uh, <coughs> has to be considered by this board meeting. And frankly, I don't know how we're going to handle this situation now. <laughs> <coughs> we 
what we got here, the Vegetation for the Office Workers Union is now a member of the Executive Board, and we have a contract with the Office Workers Union. Well, we'll just exclude him from the meeting. Uh, would you mind stepping out? <laughs> 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 oh, no, you don't. <laughs> uh, this, uh, I have been advised by the Chief Shop Steward of the Office Workers Union that she'd like to reopen the agreement. Uh, ordinarily, what uh, has been done here is it might have been referred to the executive committee <coughs> to use the wines up, but I do think to go shaking. That's the way it's been happening. But uh, what is it? What do you it? mean to go <coughs> You'd be surprised how much bargaining it goes on around <laughs> what, uh, what do you want to do about this matter? The contract is on a uh, two year basis. Where is your demand? <laughs> Let me see those demands here. <laughs> you got the big time Oh, she she hadn't even got the demand drawn up. She just got you just got the opening letter, huh? I think it's a real advantage to have Robbie here because he's responsible for the expenditure of this organization right. now. <laughs> this is a very unusual session though. Carolyn is asking for a twenty percent wage decrease. <laughs> you had never been in that position before, have you? Right? Oh, Carolyn, that's all right. Just we're going to uh, send you a company union, I can see that. See, we're in the bar, don't you? We see what I catch when you're not here. See, it, it's all right. We you can find some, uh, some of these John Bushes here on the side. Yeah, <laughs> 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 fine, fine, thank you, Agency. How about you, Robbie? Go ahead. <laughs> um, I understand there's plenty of them uh, located around Jackson. <laughs> well, it's obvious. <laughs> It's obvious that we are not in a position to negotiate this contract tonight, <laughs> so uh, I think the only logical thing to do is to refer this thing to the executive committee, I suppose. <coughs> well, there is one thing that I would like to uh, <coughs> throw out here on the table. In we got a second my motion. The motion was to refer it to the executive committee. We get a second on that? Second. Well, there's one thing I, w I would like to throw out here on the table for consideration on the list. There's, there's one change that uh, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to the girls on an, uh, a technical basis only, so to speak, but then there's, there's one thing that's handed down by the International, that is on the uh, grievance procedure in this matter. Our executive board from the International standpoint has uh, come up with an agreement with the AFL-CIO on uh, such jobs as these with girls working in the uh, state offices and local unions and the FLCIO union and so on, is the uh, procedure of which to follow with uh, no strike clause, that is, no picketing clause. This is a chain of uh, uh, agreements we're following up the line through the FLCIO organization to the extent that your AFL-CIO, if it gets to that point, to uh, appoint the arbitrator out of the AFL-CIO organization. I don't have a copy of that with me. And I, of course, our secretary treasurer was up here, but she didn't have a copy either, and uh, I knew we wouldn't have a chance to go into this and would like to continue on as at present until we can get together and work this thing out. Well, uh, that's the principal change, yeah. of course. We would like to incorporate. I don't think because we all agree to no uh, arbitration procedure, just have to cancel out the contract. I'm bored of myself. I don't know. We'll have to run the rest of our picket line. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he said no picketing, but he didn't say nothing about no striking. Yeah. We've <laughs> 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 we got this anti picketing law. We ain't got to worry about that. We've got a court injunction. She starts walking the picket line. Yeah, well. <laughs> <coughs> well, we keep you a pretty good track of our tracks away. Kill your union, then. Yeah. <coughs> well, the motion is that this matter of the office workers contract be <coughs> referred to the executive committee. We have any further discussion on that? All, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? <coughs> motion carried and so ordered. Uh, well, we'll, we'll want to have a quick huddle with the executive committee after this meeting. Find out what 
what your instructions are in regards to how many of the demands should be met. Very plenty. The, the other matter <coughs> that uh, has to be decided at this meeting, and this will be the last item that I have to present you, I think we're in pretty good shape with it. So what happened to our last board board meeting, this will probably take care of the business for me to consider tonight. And that's a matter of salaries to the state council officers. At the present time, uh, Brother Knight's salary, I believe, is $7,500 a year, and mine is $8,000 a year. 8, 7 to 5 and 8, right? 7 to 5 and 8. I'd like to have a word to say, Claude, if I yes, support it, of course, that privilege. Well, since you're picking up about two thirds of the time, we'll let you talk about it. All of the members of the board, except the new ones I know, are aware of the fact that the AFL-CIO is one form or another, putting a very substantial amount of money into this organization as a subsidy, uh, because we recognize the importance of the work that you're doing. We want to see the organization operated at maximum efficiency and uh, at as high a level of activities as, as it is possible to maintain. As a matter of fact, uh, of this current year, the sum, the grand total of this runs about $36,486. You don't let run it up on a tape. Oh, yeah, I added it up. <laughs> which, uh, which is, uh, as you can recognize, a very substantial portion of your total budget. And uh, we're, cl we're glad to do that, and we do it uh, willingly and, uh, and with a feeling that we're, we're getting money, uh, value received for it. Now, <coughs> couple of months ago, Claude applied for a direct subsidy. This total figure here is in the form of a number of different <coughs> items, coat money and uh, registration money and WC and matching grant, all of those other things going to make up this grant total. But Claude raised the question with me at the time the amalgamated was still out and your financial picture was getting pretty low, your balance was here of the possibility of a direct subsidy from the AFL-CIO to make up this deficit. And <clears throat> after consultation back and forth and the submission of uh, uh, tentative budget and the, uh, of expenditures and anticipated revenue, we worked out uh, a, a, a subsidy. And that subsidy was based upon, well, actually what I did when and submitted the final budget of anticipated expenditures and receipts, I arbitrarily added 10% to the 10% of the payroll to that budget and sent that upstairs with my recommendation, figuring out what that came to a month of my recommendation for this being granted. In other words, this was <coughs> the figure that we arrived at, and the subsidy which you are receiving includes enough money for a 10% increase in your payroll for wage and salary increases. Now that doesn't mean that you're limited to giving 10%. If you can work out your budget through readjustments, through greater income than you anticipated for per capita tax or in any other way, we certainly would raise, have no objection to your going beyond that 10% if you see fit to do so. But uh, uh, we do feel that you're obligated least use 10% of this for salary increases because uh, it was it was based upon a 10% increase uh, in salaries. Now, Claude and uh, Tom haven't had a, I don't know about the office people precisely, but they haven't had a salary increase in something over five years, I think it is. Four years. Four years. Their salaries are not high. They may seem high to some uh, people who are working in the shop, but in terms of the kind of salaries that our state federation officers are getting over the country, they're right down close to the bottom. The median figure for officers of state councils now is just under $12,000 a year. And in order, and the salaries that are paid to international know that you're not going to be able to get and keep good people unless you pay uh, salaries that are comparable to what's being paid uh, in the movement in other positions. So I would like to 
Sometimes he said he'd like to have a word to say. The salaries that the Mississippi officers get are the lowest of the six states in my area. And my area is probably the lowest in terms of officer salaries of any area in the country. Yet the salaries of Mississippi are the lowest in my area. We've lost in three states in my in two states in my area in the last three months. Good officers because they could not live and take care of their families on the salaries that they get. I don't see our Claude and Tom have been getting by. I understand that Claude has been spending some of his own money to exist. And the salaries that you're too often to make us <coughs> salaries in line with comparable work and even with some of our, our international representatives actually which I uh, is not even in my opinion comparable work looking at the budget the money that we've got to work with I feel probably there's 10 percent As much as we should flirt with, let's say at the moment, anyway. Uh, in light of that, for further discussion, I would like to <coughs> that we do increase this salary by the ten percent as proposed by Sam. I would say. Let, let me say this to make it absolutely clear. Now, the, the subsidy includes a ten percent of your total payroll, so there's enough money there to negotiate with the girls in the office. <laughs> Thank you for the information. Don't be letting us <coughs> that would be private information. That ten percent told for you. Take that out of me. Don't we get a second on that motion? Ask for 10%. Okay. You second the motion. Carol. Motion was that the salary increases for the council officers be in uh ten by ten percent. Well, 
thing that I am. I think these girls are in fine shape now in view of what uh, Sam said. They know that 10% has a the minimum. They don't know how much more is there. Well, yes. this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this, one, but this one's supposed to have been said yet. This must be in an office. Mr. Chairman. That's what you're in the office. No, don't. I think the young lady sees the books regularly enough. To <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman, I think that's already taken care of. I think that's already taken care of. This 10% covers a four, year four years. Oh, yes. So she oh, hasn't got very much. It covers a four year period. I mean, I think I could come up with an argument against this thing, you know. <laughs> they hadn't had a raise for four years. What four years are you talking about? The ones behind, right. see. Well, when do you want this to go into effect? That's a matter of young, <laughs> young, the price is that when do you want to go into effect? Let's get a motion. When do you want it to go into effect? January. Of last year? Of the past year? <laughs> <laughs> or a year before last? Or a year before last? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into effect. Let's get a motion. I'll second the motion. Discussion <laughs> on that motion? Well, I want to know if that's going to be uh, satisfactory to the officers. Uh, no. At 10%. Right, yeah, right. Right. Satisfied? They hadn't got uh, the choice now. They've accepted <laughs> the nomination. <laughs> I'll have to talk to my wife so I can smile. I'd like to let you know. We ain't had any further discussion on that motion. <laughs> I started to bring her down and you let her negotiate this proposition. I think right. you might very well, at, uh, later on, after you see how your yeah. affiliation situation works yeah. out, you might take another look at this in, in uh, yeah. three or four months when you have another meeting. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's true. I mean, for what I'm concerned. But you're not getting out of line with this temper. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I appreciate I mean, I appreciate this consideration myself, and I know that Tom does. Of course, we, uh, we know full well what the situation is. We recognize the fact that the answer to most of our problems is in this field of affiliation. <coughs> and uh, frankly, if uh, there's a possibility we might lose some affiliation as a result of this thing we just come out of, it means that Stan Smith's going to have to dig in dig up for more money <laughs> if, this happens, if this happens. Uh, of course, I know that he will. <coughs> I know that he'll lose yes to that. But, the, but this consideration would, uh, <laughs> would take care of some of my immediate needs, I'll assure you of that. I know it would be some help, you know what I'm talking about. Get out the motion is, I believe, put it into effect June the 1st. We didn't vote on that motion, did we? We have a further discussion on that motion? Not all in favor of the motion, signify it by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carried and so on. access to that suit you got. He's a sporty member. He wears HIS clothes. A couple of other little items, and this pretty well take care of it, unless some of y'all have got something you want to bring up in the meeting. It's pretty well close the thing off. Uh, this morning, rather, I consulted with Senator Bobron. I came over to mention about this chargeback proposition. <coughs> Last night at Dane's, I had been advised by Merle Palmer that he had been talking to Bodron, and Bodron had talked with him about the fact that I had talked to him in the hall yesterday at the hotel here about the, the hearing that was set for this afternoon at 3. And uh, I told him, of course, that I wouldn't be able to come over because of the convention but I tried to send somebody over. He sent me a message of sorts. I gathered it was a message of sorts. So I was left with the opinion, that's what it was. <coughs> that if I didn't show at that meeting today, he would have an excuse to delay the same some, and that's what we were looking for. So I called him this morning and told him that I wouldn't be able to come over, that I couldn't send him Committee, but personally, I would rather appear myself. So he says, all right, uh, I'll, I'll see what we can do or something like that. So we didn't send the committee over today. There's a good, strong possibility that the legislature will adjourn next week. And if we can drag this thing around and bog them down next week, that's all we want. But 
just thought y'all ought to be advised of this thing. And we can, in other words, if you don't bring it out, holds it over, his excuse is that we haven't had a chance to appear. They get into the closing days of the session, they won't have time to hold a hearing. They won't bring it out without a hearing. So this is our best round. I just thought I ought to mention this to you. Yeah, <coughs> it looks like that there might be a good chance now that we kill it. Then they'll have to have the appropriation to make another pretty good step. <coughs> that's right. That's right. They, 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 they are, and this has to be approved in Washington. So we, we won't have to worry about this proposition if we get over this hurdle. See, if we get bogged down here, we'll, we'll have this in kill for the time being. Question Are they uh, going to carry on through the week as far as, or do you have any idea? What's the thing? Are they going to knock off on that? Right. <coughs> Will they knock off on Friday or are they going to? The legislature. Right. I haven't got a report on there. What the budget plan is. They've been knocking on Thursday on afternoon, but since yeah. they're getting down to the what it looks like they're going to try to close it out, they might work through Friday. And well, I, that's what I was But the finance committee's got it, and of course, the finance is, is a problem. And um, they they stay awfully busy in that committee. And he could have all kinds of excuses not to bring this thing up. Frankly, Bodron seems to be opposed to the charge back proposition. This is in our favor, whereas in the House they put it set up a subcommittee that was on lock, stock, and barrel by Mr. Owen Cook over at Yazoo City. This little fellow from, from uh, Yazoo City, uh, Brad McDougal, was put up as a subcommittee chairman, a four member, five member committee. We didn't have one friend on it. It was simply a railroad job. And then we never did have a hearing with Full House uh, Ways and Means Committee. You know what I'm talking about? Very obvious what they did in that situation. And then they wind him and dined him around here for weeks. You know how them things go. And uh, slipped it through over there. Took some of my own people away from us on that one. By the way, your, your boys left us on that thing. Well, I, I knew Estes was about to get Yeah. The pressure was on well, I thought you. I thought you uh, would be interested <laughs> in, in what the status of this thing was. Now, there was a question raised on the floor of the convention down to this afternoon. By Mr. Beckham. I think this board needs to make a decision on before we leave here. I know that the executive committee would like to have your advice on it. They don't. I don't think need to be put in the position of making this decision by themselves when, when we do have a chance to discuss it with the board. And that's this matter of refunding dues. <laughs> Once the dues have been paid out. I've never heard of this before. This would be a new one on me. How do you go about refunding? You those? don't refund nothing. You give them credit. Mr. Chairman? You give yeah, them credit fast there. The remarks that I made, I, I don't know how they were taken. I know how I intended them. But Secretary of Trade, yeah, I didn't say you. Did I say you? I meant Brother Beckham. No. I said no. Beckham. Yeah, but I commented on it. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, as chairman of the committee. That <coughs> The Secretary of Treasury would notify each local union yeah. of a credit due as of January 1st or December yeah. 31st or January the 1st. Yeah. I don't know whether the delegates understood that or not. I, I didn't mention any did. refund. Yeah. I, I uh, think I didn't think you did. Affiliated. It be affiliated. I didn't think you did, no. <laughs> What's behind this refund? Evidently, he must be going to take his local out of town. Tommy is instructed to pull out if Claude Ramsey was re elected president. He and all his members. So, wouldn't it be worth something to get rid of it? <laughs> 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 well, you get rid of him anyway. You're right to give him his no, money. <laughs> all they like to come up is you just talking about his own little local. I'm talking about his local. Oh, yeah, you got about 28. 28. 28. 20 something. So, yeah. uh, well, I'm worried about that. What did they do? Well, they paid on a year basis or what? Well, 480 is in the same change. I think they might have paid some dues in advance. I don't know. Oh, yeah. If this is a situation on a dedicated assessment, I don't know exactly uh, where in the world we are with that situation because under the Constitution, before it was amended this time, they could pay that dues. A lot of unions pay it in advance. We paid ours by the year on the dedicated assessment. In other words, we paid, paid up to uh, August 1st. Is that right? Or you made it? Well, I believe it's August. No, it'd be paid beyond.
on the date of the, when the effective date. Thing that was cut off by his credit. Credit him with that much. Well, of course, that, uh, that will be easy to credit him with it. We can work that out. But the thing that I want to know is about this refund and this, this money that's been paid in. I mean, but, yeah, yes. Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't think we need to discuss that a whole lot. I'll make a motion that we do not refund any of the dues paid in, that they be credited. I'll second that motion. Yeah. That they be given credit. They be given credit for the money that they have overpaid. Mm -hmm. Towards the on the new dues basis. Right. Yes. We have a second on that motion. I second. second that motion. Any I discussion? I think though they should be notified. Well, yeah. Of this fact. Yeah. Just where they stand. That's right. Yeah, it's gonna. We're gonna have to do a lot of correspondence <coughs> on this thing. We're gonna all of these locals that's paid dues in advance, that's got some credit on this thing, we'll have to figure out where they are and give them credit, just like we talked about in this right. situation. This, this, this is gonna be the next big job. But once this is done, we'll get squared away. We'll be all right. We'll get away from away from these problems that Tom has been losing sleep about. Do we have any uh, further discussion on that motion? Not all in favor of the motion signify to say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Do you have anything that you need to bring before the meeting? No, the only thing I'd like to say, Claude, is that uh, I appreciate the uh, action that they're taking here with reference to the salary <coughs> of <course> the automobile. <coughs> I'm bringing this up here to find out whether or not you see whenever this was done we was in the middle of this thing and the committee felt that in view of this revolt it looked like it was coming that, that it might be a good idea to do a mailing uh, maybe to try to help help it off in addition to the mailings he was doing to the locals and of course as I explained to you I consult with the attorney he advised me against it the situation might be a lot more improved now it might be better not to do it now that's what he wanted up. Of course, what does it cost us to do a like that? Well, it's going on. Yeah. Well, that's a tremendous... Statewide mailing. Oh, oh, oh. 
feel an obligation to do it.
mail to the membership yeah. just listing, titling the objection I would not join the back and, and stating at the same time that the that this was approved by the convention. That the convention authorized. That's right. Yeah. Authorized by the convention. Well, of course, that was one of the reasons, one of the reasons, Wiesenberg's uh, suggestions that we get convention action, we're going to be in better shape, we can advise <coughs> that if this was done at convention. I knew if I took long enough to write that letter, we'd get out of it. Well, well is it agreed by the board, or would you like to confirm the, the action of the committee, or should we do it by a new motion? Probably should. I think we can uh, make available to the locals in the CLUs a copy of the petition. Do what, Janet? I think we could make uh, available to the locals through the CLUs. That, that the petition. The petition. The petition could, could actually be sent to East Central Labor Union. You mean a the copy of it on file? A copy of it could be filed in the Central Labor Union. Well, we didn't say we'd send it out. We said we'd make it available. Make it available. Yeah. I mean, that, that, the question he's raised there is whether we just kept a copy on file in the state office for yeah. them to check, or if you actually let the Central Labor Union have a copy of it, where it could be checked. Yeah. If they well, if they're the interested, they'll write the Central. I mean, the uh, state, state office, office for a copy of it. Is and some of these central bodies <coughs> don't have too good a filing system on these. Yeah. Sir, keep these documents. Even though I'm opposed to saying I didn't think at all on it, uh, <coughs> because from the contacts I've had, uh, it would do more harm than good. Uh, in light of the fact that you've already committed yourself, as you say, I make a motion that you go, and, uh, go ahead and make the mailing to the membership of the one page as suggested by Brother Dan Powell and then. send a copy to each central body and advise the locals that we have it, uh, that you do have copies if they want to see it or we, or they can come by the council office and see it. Is that what you want to do? No. On the petition, I would send the locals a letter saying that this petition consists of 22 of some so many pages. Some page. Now, we're going to make this available to the locals, but we've got to know if you want a copy. So let us know so that we can run these copies. You won't get requests from copies from many locals. You but get you, it from one that's got somebody who wants to go fishing. No, nah, not many, but you cleared yourself there. Then. <coughs> I don't know if our interpretation of making anything available to people is, is you've got it if they want to see it. You don't say I'm going to get it to you. I don't believe that office is mailing out either. Then. Uh, no, no, I just simply say it's in the office if you want to check it. Well, let me say, you have a motion on the floor to do the more mailing. Did we get a second on that motion? I included also that you make the petition available in the council office. Have you got the motion down that you gave it to you? So he can write an ask for that. We had a second on that motion? Get it straight. Have we got a second to the motion? I think I won't. I want to second it, but I want you to know just what, what the motion <laughs> consists of. <laughs> make it say, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. My motion was that you make the statewide mailing to the membership of the one page letter that Brother Powell suggested, and that the petition itself, that you state that the petition itself is available in the council office to anybody who. You didn't second it? Yeah. I wouldn't put that availability thing in the membership. I'd put that in a letter to a local. Yeah, so that's what you refer to. That's what I was referring to. Yeah, a letter to a local. I say in accordance with the convention action, this following is the bases upon which the petition is. And it is the petition itself, which consists of 18 pages plus 200 pages of exhibits, whatever it totals up, is on file in the council office and is available to any properly authorized party. 
That's honest. That's where I understood the motion that the locals be advised in was available, and the other dealt with the mailing of a membership. Uh, we have any more further discussion on the motion? Okay. Not all in favor of the motion signify it by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> motion carried and so on. Do you have anything else to bring up? No. To the <laughs> yes. Hmm. Well, this completes the business that I had to bring before the board meeting. Unless someone else has something to bring up, we can adjourn and she can start paying you fellas off. We had the pictures made in there. Yes. Uh, I can imagine everyone in here would like to have one of those pictures. Or either find out where we can get them at and uh, try to order it for them. I'd be willing to buy them. You'd like to get a copy of the picture? Yeah, I would. Well, this uh, gentleman taking the pictures is with uh, Father Toby and Shorty Area. Shorty Area. You think that uh, we could get reproduction? Yeah, he might even yeah. send them to us free. I don't know. What business is he in? He purchased for it, too. Well, we might, we might get in touch with him and tell him we want, uh, uh, what, 15 copies of it? Would all of you like to have a copy of the picture? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make the garden next year. I think. You are? <laughs> 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 well, let's get a motion on the floor here, then, if we, that we order a copy, enough copies of the picture for each member of the board. Go to the majority motion. Okay. Yeah. 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 It won't cost us over a buck a piece, something like that. Uh, I, I'd like to make that motion. Are you offer that motion? Yeah. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify for saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carried so on. Boy, we, before we knock off here, what was the comments about Hazel Brown and Smith's speech at the convention today? Did y'all hear anything much? Both sides. I, I, Both sides. I didn't hear any. What was? Uh, I found this out. Uh, good comments and also, like I say, when I walked out in the hall, uh, this particular group that just couldn't stand it, uh, well, they didn't stay to listen to the speech. They just had to get up and walk. And they were walking the floor out here. And uh, she was described as a witch and several more uncomplimentary terms by this group. And then they'd go back and they'd listen a little bit and they'd come back and they'd say something else. <laughs> <laughs> and go back and feed them. When, when, uh, they must have really been upset when Toby got my Well, heart. when he got there, <laughs> They were about ready to climb the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Put the ladders on the next wall. Well, uh, he did, and that was when he could come up and made you the comp uh, compliment towards you. He said that you were a good union man, you were conscientious and everything, but you should, could sure go up way out and lay a field. And you were the instigator of all this. He a close. That wasn't a great big man when he huh? made that statement. It was a fellow with a tattoo on his arm. Was it the guy with checkered shirt, big fellow? No, it no, he's the guy that ran against oh, Claude. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have anything else that needs to be brought up? We're gonna, if not, we're gonna adjourn and let her go ahead.